Om Shanti, Namaste. Thanks for joining me on my One Posture Wednesday. So this today I'm offering is Padangustasana. So this is big toe pose or big toe posture. And um, this can be found on my YouTube channel, which you can access via my website, www nutri plus.co.uk if you go to the services and classes on that first page it's written in white click on that it takes you to my online weekly classes go to wednesday and there's a little hyperlink click here in brackets go there it takes you straight to the youtube channel lots of videos on there yoga videos and if you go to videos then all the one posture wednesdays are on there so pada gustasana so have a look at the feet you know, invite them to be parallel. So about six inches apart or so, yogi's choice, what feels right for you. And then we're gonna connect with Tadasana. So this is really important because this is gonna be quite a lot of feet and legs work, this posture. So it's a forward fold. So just making sure that if you have any uh, lower back issues, it's great for lower back, but just be careful if you have any um, slip discs not to come any further forwards than 90 degrees. So as we start to connect with Tadasana, you might soften the gaze, close the eyes, and again, spread the toes, a light touch there. Press down through the balls, the outside blades of the foot, the inside outside heels. Start to rise up through the inner arches of the feet, ankles, knees and groins. Engage Mula Bandha from pubic bone to tailbone. Start to engage Uddiyana Bandha, abdominal lift and lock. As we drive and rise up through the front and back body with the energy, don't press out, don't puff out the front ribs, relax the shoulders and broaden the collarbones. So the lungs are like balloons of air, they're trying to escape from the chest. The arms are loose, the side body, the chin tucks back up. There's a rise at the top of the head to Sahasrara Chakra, that's the seed of universal consciousness and magnetism with our magnetic aura or magnetic force field. Keep pressing down through the feet and rising up out the top of the head. Try not to overthink it. So try not to press the knees back. Have a softening around the knees, just a gentleness. And as we draw focus to the four corners of the feet pressing down and that rise up out the top of the head, the feet are being acknowledged to Padabanda. So the wheels of energy, of lift in the soles of the feet. Take a moment to acknowledge the breath and inviting an even and steady inhale and a controlled and patient exhale. Then when you're ready, slowly flutter open the eyelashes and let's turn to the side. So I'd like you to see what's happening from the side. So again, just the feet are parallel, about six inches or so. Engage through the padabanda again, engage through the feet, the four corners. And if we were to come forwards without doing anything, we would just come forwards from the waist. And, you know, it doesn't really engage the hips or legs at all. And you can see my hands don't naturally go to the ground when that happens. However, if we inhale and take the arms up, and I like to start kind of like, as if I'm climbing up a rope ladder, so it's like one hand over the other and above my head. I'm kind of climbing up from the waist, lifting out of the waist, and coming up through the steps of my ribs. Try to relax the shoulders, so you keep rising. Don't press out the breastbone and, relax and, and collapse in the lower back. Belly in, tail down, relax the glutes, and keep climbing up that imaginary rope ladder, hand over hand. Inhale, relax the shoulders, keep pressing down through the feet, reach up once more, and then exhale, hinging from your hips, really lifting up through the shins, calves, around the knees and thighs. And then we find naturally that we go further. So from here, if that isn't for you, that forward fold in terms of that's not available with hamstrings, perhaps they're very tight or short, then you would bring in a belt, a yoga strap, some tights, a scarf, and put it underneath the feet, underneath the soles of the feet. 
And then you've got that awareness of this pulling that we're going to be moving to, but without coming lower than 90 degrees if there's a prolapsed disc or if there's very tight hamstrings. So what we're going to be doing is, let's do it with the strap first actually. So this is the option for those that have tight hamstrings or for those that have any lower back um, prolapsed discs. It's great for lower back issues if you can come forwards, yeah? So if that's not available to you, this is your option. So what you would be doing is you would straighten the arms as you offer the heart the breastbone forwards. Don't crank up the back of the neck, keep the chin slightly tucked. And as you exhale, you bend at the elbows and you keep pulling up on the strap and press the feet down. So you start to get this lovely awareness of stretch through the front and back of the legs. And then I'm going to show you where you've come all the way forwards and down. So you would take two peace fingers and thumbs, that's my dog having a drink, around the big toes, the tip of the thumb to the tip of the toes. So from here, so we're working with straight legs. We're going to relax the shoulders, broaden the collarbones. And we're thinking about this lift through the front shin and calf around the knee to lift the front thigh and back thigh. And there's this awareness of the sit bones going straight up. So really broadening through the sit bones and offering them to the sky. There's length where the legs meet the torso over the hip flexor. So really inviting length from the hip to the bottom rib. So drawing Uddiyana Banda gives you space. So your abdominal lift in up and back gives you some space. And what we're doing is we're going to inhale, straighten the arms off of the heart forwards. Remember, don't wrinkle the back of the neck, keep the chin slightly tucked. Really lift up through the legs and thighs, press down through the four corners of the feet, lift up through the tailbone and sit bones, create space there. And as you exhale, bend the elbows and invite the belly to the thighs and tuck the chin. So let's go again, inhale, straighten the arms, offer the heart forwards, chin slightly to the chest, press four quarters of the feet down, rise up through the shins, calves, around the knees, the thighs, spread those sit bones, point them to the sky, length where the hip, between the hip and the lower rib, and exhale, bend the elbows out to the sides, chin to chest, look up perhaps to the navel, Relax the shoulders, they will want to hunch up to the ears. Keep relaxing them and broadening the collarbones. Let's go once more. Inhale, straighten the legs, uh, straighten the arms, sorry. Breastbone forwards, chin to chest. Press into the four corners of the feet as you exhale. Bend the elbows and pull up on those toes as they press down. Really work the front thighs, the back thighs, chin to chest, pulling up on the shin carved around the knees, spread the sit bones, point them to the sky, length in the side body. And keep relaxing the breathing in and out here. And it's really important to know that, you know, there's a stimulation of lots of things here. We're calming the brain, so we're relieving stress and anxiety. Stimulating the liver and kidneys, the back of the body there, stretching the hamstrings and the calves, strengthening around the thighs, we're improving digestion, really assisting relieving symptoms of menopause, and you know, also relieving headaches and insomnia. So when you're ready, very slowly coming out, so bend the knees, release the grip of the toes, just pop the hands perhaps on the shins, and then take a breath there, breathing in and breathing out, coming up slowly, we've been down for a while, so we don't get dizzy, and then pop the hands above the knees on the thighs and come up a little more, Breathing in and breathing out. And then again, hands onto the hips, come up a little higher, pause there, breathing in and breathing out. And then slowly rolling the head upon its axis, inhale and exhale as we find standing. Release and come to sit. So you might pop a cushion underneath you or a book or a block if the knees are higher than the hips, you might have one leg out, you might have both legs out, you might be on your knees. And we're just going to acknowledge this posture, Padangustasana, big toe pose or posture. 
So softening the gaze, if that might be a comfortable thing to do, maybe take it down if not. And just let that posture be acknowledged in this amazing body and all that it can do. Let it be welcomed in. So you can really appreciate the benefits of strengthening and stretching the legs, stimulating the kidneys and the liver, easing, inviting a calmed mind, releasing symptoms of menopause, headaches and insomnia. When you're ready, bring the hands, palms together at the heart center, thumbs to the breastbone. Inhale, exhale, just acknowledge chin to chest. Very slowly release the hands and open the eyes. Om Shanti, Namaste. Thanks so much for joining me on my One Posture Wednesday. And as always, there'll be another one next week. So it's a weekly library that I'm building. It will be staying on there for you to access whenever feels available to you, if this time slot doesn't suit you. And I do have people that join me for it live. So if you want to be one of those people, then I offer a Q&A after it, or if there's only a few of us, I'll keep your microphones on and you can stop me and we can talk about it during. Otherwise, www.nutri5plus.co.uk is where you can access all my One Posture Wednesdays because you can go to my YouTube channel from there. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me. Take care.